The Minnesota Timberwolves had a coming out party last night at the expense of the visiting Phoenix Suns, and all the headlines today are focusing on the incredible game Anthony Edwards had, and we'll definitely get to that, but there was another player almost as instrumental who isn't getting the same kind of hype. He was making the kind of plays you might not notice, the stuff that a team needs to win a tough playoff game. And I want to introduce you to the most important X Factor of the entire series. Nas Reed has turned himself into an elite shooter from behind the arc, and it keeps the floor well-spaced when Carl Anthony Towns is on the bench. Eric Gordon must not have studied the scouting report, since he should never be this far off of Reed from one pass away. It's too easy to make the quick pass and Reed to get the open look. A huge advantage Coach Finch has is Reed's playmaking ability at his size and position. It makes it very hard on the defense when you've got four or five guys who can all make plays off the dribble. Cat starts to back down on a severe mismatch, and Reed first tries to set Edwards up with the flare screen before popping out to the open right wing. Check the smooth crossover that gets him into the most desired area, the paint, and then throws a perfect kick out to an open shooter. You generate enough shots like these, you're going to win. The game plan was clearly to double Cat in the post as Booker tells Gordon to get down there. They cover it pretty well with Eubanks rotating up to Reed, but he's too quick and gets right to the basket for the nice lefty finish and defensive goaltending. Finch has a lot of options with a skilled player like Reed. They don't lose any playmaking by sitting Cat and Edwards as he targets Gordon with a nice tween cross, luring O'Neal in to help from one pass away, which directly opens up the lane for slow-mo to drive and hit the midi. When Conley runs get action with Gobert to his strong left hand, it forces Nurkic to drop and stop the ball, leaving Grayson Allen trailing the play. Because of that, O'Neal has to bump down to Rudy to stop his roll. They've opened up a long closeout and Reed attacks on the catch with his left hand and forces the defense to put him on the line. Even the little things help in a big way, as he supports Edwards trying to block out a bigger Eubanks by squeezing him and moving him out of the way when the ball bounces off the rim. Or this play, where Cat tries to force the issue with an awkward shot, but Reed followed the action, then goes for the rebound that causes it to go off the Suns for an extra possession. It wasn't perfect, mind you. He waited too long after the catch to attack the closeout, and as a result, he got stuck with a tough, twisting right-handed floater to his left that is way off. He had been defending guards and forwards for most of the game, but he's big enough to then go guard the opponent's center putting so much pressure on Nurkic that he throws this terrible pass. While Alexander Walker gets the steal, Reed should get half the credit. With a big lead in the Suns getting desperate, the Wolves can spread the floor and what a luxury it is to be able to skip it to your center-sized player who can drive baseline, hover in the air under the hoop, and then fire this absolute strike to create yet another wide-open three-point shot. Of course, he might have traveled on his play, but the point remains. He's got next-level passing ability that the Suns are going to struggle to account for. When we get to the Ant section, you'll see why they were so willing to double him out on the perimeter. And the ability to make the Suns pay for this is the key to this series. I don't know if Cat is going to make this play. A lefty drive into the middle with a nice little dish to Rudy where he can easily catch it and go up strong for the foul and two free throws. Where it got demoralizing for the Suns is this section of the game, when they knew it was over 10 minutes early. This bad miscue by Beal enables Reed to get going in transition, and check this incredible move. A short hop gather into a windmill over Gordon's head into an inside hand reverse at full speed off the glass softly for the 19 point lead. This deserves another look, since it was such a great display of skill and a shot everyone should master at all levels. Again, with Ant commanding all the attention, they catch KD too far off of Reed from one pass away. This pass is incredibly easy to make, the shot is open, and the lead grows. You simply cannot defend Reed this way if you want to win. Every good team needs guys like this who not only accept their roles but excel and expand them until they're indispensable on the court the same way that Manscaped is with their new Performance Package 5.0 Ultra which has everything you'll need to look and feel as good as Nas Reed does on the court. If you want to get your balls into the basket, they've got to be well kept and their dual skin safe blade heads provide an unparalleled level of trimming from the Lawn Mower 5.0 Ultra. While the trimmer blade features longer, wider, and rounded teeth that cuts through hair with ease, it's incredibly gentle on the skin. 
But here comes the real showstopper, the foil blade. Crafted to transcend the boundaries of your typical trim with the trimmer blade, this foil blade is designed to leave you with a finish that's irresistibly sleek and utterly bare. I love the bigger LED light that illuminates the hard to reach areas so they're ready for their close up. The rechargeable weed whacker means you'll never have to leave the house with ear or nose hair sticking out and because it's waterproof, cleaning is easy. Right now, with my code BBALL, I can get you 20% off your order and two free gifts. Some of the most comfortable boxers I've ever worn and a travel bag to keep all your Manscaped products safe and handy. I'd say the starters weren't using their Manscaped products since they got so thoroughly outplayed by the Suns and that should concern Coach Finch. But he turned to a lineup that he barely used in the regular season to essentially end the game at the end of the third quarter. This is their best defensive lineup, but also with plenty of firepower with Edwards and Reed out there. While this horn set had some promise with the pick and roll to the left, it got screwy when McDaniels cuts through looking for a pin down from Rudy. But they're able to flow back into a simple pick and roll out top, and here's where Edwards started doing his MVP dance. And this shot has to look pretty familiar to MJ and Kobe fans. But he decided to avoid all the five-man motion stuff and just let everyone in the building, including Mr. Kevin Durant, know that he's the new kid on the block. Check how he steps back to fake the shot with his right hand, the right foot plants behind him to load up and explode, and KD has no choice but to turn and run to cut him off. Edwards throws the right foot out in front to stop on a dime, then steps back for space and shoots this in KD's face. Here's the reason I've been saying this guy is going to win an MVP at some point. He gets the tough rebound, senses this is the moment to let the Suns know this game is unwinnable, so he controls the entire possession by rejecting the screen, crossing up KD and facing him up with an inside out dribble before using another ball screen to the left. He checks to see if Rudy is open, then realizes he's got 5 feet of space to cold rise up in KD's face again from 25 feet and swish this. And this moment was special, letting KD know he's the man in this game and Durant almost seemingly enjoying the moment as well. During Ant's explosion in the third quarter, he treated us to an amazing display of footwork and I want to make it clear that this is completely legal at all levels of basketball. His right foot is the pivot foot and the rules state that he's allowed to lift that foot in order to shoot or pass before it comes back down to the floor. So kids, learn this move right now. Oh, and to those wanting to move the goalposts and claim it was a travel because he moved his pivot before the step through, he's also allowed to pivot from toe to heel on an axis, and that's basically all he does. So while it appears the foot quote unquote moves, it's just a legal pivot from his toe to his heel before he steps through. They almost give Reed another open three with his early help from one pass away, but Ant was possessed at this point, and here's a nice right foot jab into a tween that forces Durant to drop his left foot. Notice how Edwards zips the ball on the gather in order to generate power and synchronize his arms and legs properly as the ball splashes through once more. With this game all but over, they try to explore that read three off the help from one pass away. He thinks better of it, so Edwards does the honors for a massive exclamation point. With this special line about there, Nas Reed's defensive activity saved a bunch of points last night. He realizes the spacing is poor in that left corner and Alexander Walker can guard two guys. So he peels off and quick jumps into a contest of a layup to force the miss, allowing Rudy to then tap it to a teammate for the stop. Again, he might not get all the box score glory, but his aggressiveness around the hoop prevents O'Neal from grabbing the offensive rebound and enables yet another crucial stop for the Wolves. He continued to make plays, like this nice deflection that forces a turnover from the Hall of Famer, and then another great hustle play as he deflects the rip through, goes after it strong, and forces another turnover. So watch for this five-man group to get more than the seven minutes they got in game one. And if the Suns can't right the ship and clean up their poor defense, I don't think they survive the series if they go down 2-0 on the road.